one of the southeast's most bold and innovative growers. Peter Barfoot and his team have managed to grow crops here in the UK that no one thought possible. From tender stem broccoli to corn on the cob, this harvest is all about pushing the boundaries. Peter Barfoot, you are a pioneer, I think it's fair to say. Always looking for something different. What we've got there in here is sunshine, and we just had to find new products to grow in the sunshine. Can I lift the box? Because I haven't lifted a box for, like, over <laughs> ten years. Do you know, when I was in the market, when I was in Covent Garden, this tender stem didn't even exist. No, and this tender stem is a cross between broccoli and Chinese sweet kale, which gives us its sweet texture. Is that right? And this fascinates me, because, look, these I know as French beans, and I handled hundreds of boxes of these every day, and they all came from Kenya. Yeah, and we said, hey, we'll have a go at that. We can do that on the south coast of England. But so much of what we eat now is actually down to you finding out that it could be grown in this country, finding sources for those things. We've got so much to talk to you about, Peter. But for now, let's see how it all began. I grew up in a small village called Botley, which was in the heart of the strawberry growing area of the Hampshire Basin. If I had became a strawberry grower, I would have been sixth generation. But uh, by the time I'd left school, I'd had enough of strawberries. So I embarked on a different journey. Rather than compete with the big players with better soils elsewhere in the East, Peter became a pioneer of new and exotic vegetables, utilising the warm climate of the South Coast to produce vegetables that many believed could never be grown here in Britain. It all began in the 1970s. The first one, the easiest one, um, was courgette, which at that time was extremely exotic. It was called a zucchini. In the moment, we're harvesting between 200 and 250 tonnes a week of courgettes. Who eats them and where they go, I just have no clue. I've definitely described myself as an entrepreneur, always looking, always thinking of the next product. It's what's built this business from 21 acres to 6,000 acres in the UK. We're farming partnerships in 35 countries around the world. Peter was one of the first to import butternut, squash and sweet potatoes to the British market. Although Barfoot's biggest earner and the crop closest to his heart is sweet corn, which can be grown here. I get quite frustrated because I express to everybody, you know, I was thinking about sweet corn last night at three o'clock in the morning, they think it's sad off sod. But that's been my life, thinking about sweet corn, how you can grow it better, how you can grow more of it for less cost. So it's so funny listening to you talk about the exotic courgette. And now the courgettes is a mainstay of my kitchen and my garden. Yeah, well, that's where we started with exotic courgettes a very long time ago. <laughs> They're now mainstream. But we're in sweet corn at the moment, and that is still fairly uh, exotic. And you say we're in sweet corn. We're in fields and fields and fields of it. I mean, you're the king of sunshine veg. And I've tried to grow sweet corn at home with very little success. Absolutely rubbish, to be honest with you. Is it because, I mean, we can see we're minutes away from the sea standing in this field? We get plenty of light. We've got the Isle of Wight moored offshore. That's splitting up clouds as they come towards us. And most of the summer leaving us bask in sunshine. So you really are in, a, in an absolutely unique spot. And that's, I mean, that makes you world class. That's no exaggeration, is it, in the, in the world of growing yeah, sweet corn? Yeah, it gives us exactly what we need for growing sweet corn. And what we see over the, most of the countryside is maize. Yeah, it's maize. It's grown to make silage to feed the cattle on during, during the winter. Sweet corn's been uh, bred totally different out of maize to retain very high sugar levels. So we don't it, want to be eating maize, don't be tempted You to do not want maize. to be eating maize. It would be a horrible experience and put you off for life. But sweet corn, since it's been introduced, and it's wonderful to have you growing it in this country, is a super popular veg, isn't it? We eat more sweet corn in the UK than the rest of Europe put together. It's certainly something that we all love and certainly worth looking at in a little bit more detail. Succulent, sweet and sunshine yellow, sweet corn is protected by a tough green husk. 
Every adult cob contains around four to 500 kernels, little yellow pockets of sun-fed sweetness. Sweet corn can be described as a cereal that's also a vegetable and is an ancient crop first grown in Mexico and Central America thousands of years ago. It took until the 20th century for it to be grown commercially in this country. The variety grown here is different to the sweet corn used for tinning and freezing. The corn on the cob has a lighter texture and more sugars and flavour. In the past five years, sales have almost doubled in Britain as its popularity soars. It seems this sweet treat is here to stay. So we're standing right in the middle of it, as far as the eye can see. How much sweet corn are you actually grow in here? Well, we grow 3,000 acres, but we're stood in a field of 50 acres, mm -hmm. which is about three quarters of a million pieces of sweet corn. I've got a question, forgive me. I mean, I, I can see the harvest are pulling them up now, yeah. but how do you know when they're ready? Well, quite simple. I walk into a field, I select a cob of sweet corn, and... Um, Peter, you, really? You still, <laughs> with all this machinery, you're still peeling oh, and there's, have a look? there's nothing that beats the, the bite, the crunch, the taste, so this is it. And you can just <laughs> eat it raw like that. Look yeah, at that. Yeah, it's amazing. It's the way it should be eaten, really, to can do we have that. have a go? Take a little bit, just in case. Do you want an expert taster to have a go? It's super juicy, is the first thing you notice. Yeah. It's never normally that juicy. Full of crunch, full of sweetness. That is ludicrously sweet. That is lovely. I mean, you could snack on that raw, couldn't you? Yeah, this time of year is my lunchtime break, actually. <laughs> That is undoubtedly a beautiful thing, mm. that place. But <laughs> what I want to know is how is our harvest going? How are we doing? Well, for once, it's going really, really well. We've had a perfect season. We had a, a nice dry spring to get the seed in the grain. We've had warm weather through April, bit of rain in May. Nice bit of sunshine in June and early July. Tops up with a bit of irrigation, I may add. And then we've had a period of sunshine to finish off the ripeness. The harvesting is absolutely going well. So, so really, textbook, everything you need for good yeah. sweet corn right since the planting yeah. all the way through. Absolutely, but probably won't happen for another five years. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, you've got to make the most of it. You finish all that optimism with a little bit of pessimism. <laughs> Quite right. And but you finish his lunch, I'm eh? so well impressed with this. That's the farmer in me. <laughs> <laughs>